Alrighty, the maniac. There were, seemed to be a little bit of confusion as to how to get the RF into the computer. So I figured I'd do a quick walkthrough, and this video is actually a full demo of what I have uh, found with the HDSDR stuff uh, running with the IC7300. Um, please check out my first video for setup and configuration. You will need this. This is called the RTL SDR uh, blog or dongle. Um, there's two options. You can get the, the dongle, this part all by itself, that's around $20, or you can get the entire kit, which is around $27. You don't, the only thing you will need is this cable. And that's got an SMA connector on it. You basically take this cable, plug it in to that, cut the other end off, and solder on a solderable RCA connector to go into the RX7300 mod, and I'll cover that in a second. So you will need something like this. It doesn't have to be this, but this is the one I cover in my video. This is the one I'm using. Okay, this can be obtained through Amazon. So you have two options. You can either do this one, which is basically the kit. You will need the cable, or you can order just the individual dongle, just, just the dongle alone. And then order a SMA cable, a cable with SMA connectors on it, and just cut the end off. That's around six dollars. So, yeah, whatever, uh, do whatever you want. Um, I just ordered the kit because it was easier. I didn't know if I need any of that other stuff. I figured, ah, what the heck? Uh, for another dollar, I got a, some whipping, you know, tele telescopic antenna and whatever. You figure it out. Anyways, over to this is the other thing you're going to need. This is the RX7300 mod for the 7300. What this does is it goes into the radio. You take the top cover off. The instructions come with it. Very simple to do. Um, if you can't figure out how to do it, let me know where you live, and I'll come over there with a, t with a tack hammer, and I'll hit you in the head because you shouldn't be messing around with this anyways. It's Literally, if it takes you longer than five minutes, I'd be very surprised. I'm just kidding. I'd never do that to you. I love you guys. So this is this is what goes into the Molex connector on the back. You have to basically lift that out for the auto tuner on the 7300, and you kind of curl it around. You lay it across the circuit board. No big deal. It's not as scary as it sounds. It's not going to hurt it. Uh, and, and this is your tap point. This is where you plug in the RTL SDR dongle, which plugs into your computer. So that's how you do that stuff. Okay, I'll be back with a full demo. Okay, uh, let's run through a couple things. Uh, this is the first thing I'm going to show you. There is a latency issue. And I'm not sure how much of an issue it would be for you. I'm going to do a thorough testing on it because the Worldwide DX contest is coming. And uh, if it's an, it, it might be, an, it's about a half second of latency uh, between what the radio is hearing and what the software's spitting out uh, because it's going through the dongle. The latency is coming from the USB because the dongle's brought in to the USB port on the computer. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, latency is a factor and it is USB related. It has nothing to do with the dongle or the radio or the computer. It's, it's just the way USB works. Do some research on it and you, you'll figure it out. Okay, uh, latency is about a half second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the I'm monitoring through the computer the way this is set up right now. This is uh, through the computer. I'm monitoring everything that's coming into the radio, and it's being spit out of the computer through the surround system. Um, so let me bring this volume up first. Okay. So this is the computer, so I'm going to bring up the volume on the radio itself with an external speaker and you can hear the latency. Here we go. See, it's about a, it's about a half second. Okay, this is something I wanted to show you. So, I'm going to switch over to dummy load here. Output drive at zero. And the way this is set up is I have it set up to key the rig with the space bar right here. 
on the keyboard. Uh, the rig is completely controlled with HRD, the control surface over here, which pretty much I never use anymore. Um, but you need HRD running with the uh, uh, HDSDR. So to key the rig, I'll show you, you hit the space bar and you have to make sure you're you map, this is the key, you have to make sure you're actually clicked on this screen um, in this software. You just you just click in the black. Um, so if it's active, you're clicked on it, uh, just hit the space bar. You notice puts it in the TX, the rig goes in the TX. Okay. Um, when you take it out, it comes out. So that's how that works. So I'm going to switch back off the dummy load. And I'll show you some of the interesting things you can do with this. Anywhere you want to go on the band, you just take your cursor right here. If you're on lower side band, you click on the upper uh, band edge. And it'll take the radio there. Go over here. Uh, go over here, 3900. Let's jump down to 3954. 52, 38.40, 38.12. As you can see, it's outrageous. Uh, no more sweeping the band audibly using the VFO. Okay, so let's get the QRM. We'll go back to an area where there's heavy, where there's some QRM running. Hey, Donnie, good morning. Donnie Trump's waving at you. Way back. Okay, so we are on 3938. I'll show you what you can do here. You hear the QRM in there? Now, if you go down to your audio spectrum, there's a QRM right there. You want to get rid of it? Put your cursor right on the red line at the, at the uh, where the bandwidth is set. Mine's set out to 3600. Drag it. Bye-bye. QRM just went by by drag it back out there you go you can apply as many notch filters as you want so let's say you have some birdies or you have something going on there um, all you have to do is just literally just left click and roll the mouse and you can apply as many notches as you want within that audio spectrum and with uh, varying bandwidth so there you go to get out of the notches just left click again in the notch field and they'll disappear you will have to have the notch button on over here to do this the other thing I found interesting and my arms getting tired the other thing I found interesting is the AGC threshold so let's get a uh, see if we can find a clean area That's not bad. So over here on the AGC threshold, I have mine set to medium. Uh, and crank this up, and you'll notice that when the signal drops, it's noisy. Okay, you can roll this back down here. You'll notice it doesn't affect the audio. But it's very, very quiet. I ordered it Tuesday evening, and they said, yeah, we'll get it out Wednesday for you so you could have it by Friday, because usually it only takes a day and a half, two days. Notice the pauses in his voice. I called him yesterday. I said, I never saw any shipping notice. I ought to go out today because uh, our shipper quit. So down there... So basically what it's doing is it's grabbing only the audio. It's passing only the audio, and it's... Uh, preventing that other stuff from passing. Also, uh, there's noise blankers on here. Uh, there's also noise reduction, which is very effective. So that's pretty much a quick demonstration of what it can do. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you all later on the air. K1 Green M&M. The Green Mountain Maniac.